Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's Platform Academy session. Today we'll be talking about subscription management, specifically mapping custom tables. And uh, I am very happy you joined us today. My name is Lisa Hohenstein. I'm an outbound product manager and I've been with ServiceNow for going on four years early next year. I've been in product management for about two and a half of those, working with Adam Stout, who is joining us today as a guest speaker. Give a quick introduction to yourself. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, my name is Adam Stout. I'm an outbound product manager. I work with Lisa, um, <laughs> and I cover a lot of uh, a lot of the platform fundamentals, specifically subscription management. Um, and as always, we're excited to talk about it and help you help yourselves understand what you're using in the platform. So I do want to come off that we're going to talk about mapping custom tables today specifically. Um, this is more of an advanced feature. We all need to do it, but you need to understand the basics of subscription management first. We did a session on that last year. Um, still relevant. Everything we talked about before was good. And I think it was right around a year ago. Um, so if you haven't seen that, I'd recommend going back into the archives for um, the Platform Academy. Go watch that one. I'll then come and watch this one. <laughs> um, great. If you want to watch that one first, make sure we have our basic subscriptions. We know how to get around. Um, and then we can talk about this one. Again, this is this is more of an advanced feature. Once we have the basic set up, then we'll talk about mapping our tables. As always, uh, this is uh, our safe harbor slide. In case I let anything slip about what's coming out in the future, please don't make any buying decisions um, based off of things that haven't been released yet. We're going to be focusing on, in on things that are, are released and supported that are in Quebec, Rome, um, San Diego, Tokyo, whatever you have, this should be a, this should apply as is. Um, we're going to be looking at a Tokyo instance when we do a demo, but it will look essentially the same, except um, it won't be in the next experience uh, uh, UI if you look at it from before. All right, so let's talk about what we're going to talk about. So we're good. We're going to talk about uh, why do we have custom tables? What is a custom table? Why do I need to map them? How do I map them? And then which subscription do I choose when I map them? That, which is, again, all these are really key to understand each step. So let's get started. Why do we have custom tables? So there's a few, there's a couple different types of custom tables that we're talking about. They're all technically the same, but we use them differently. It's important to understand. Now, what we're talking about now is based off of our, our current, our standard current contract terms. If you have an older contract, it might vary a little bit, um, but we're going to be talking about the basic ones that we're looking for. So we have bundled custom tables and those come with that. We'll, bundled custom tables, also app engine starter is what we'll call them. These are what we use that, that they come with ITSM and ITBM. Um, with most of the suites, we'll have some bundled custom tables, which are designed to help us configure the applications that we have. So whether it comes with five tables or 25 tables, it's there to help us use that application a little bit better. So if we need to create a table, we can. And then we have App Engine, where we have unlimited custom tables, and we can build. We're designing to build. Everything is new. Um, whether we're extending tasks or we're building uh, other custom tables, build, 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 and whatever we need to have. That's why App Engine comes with unlimited, so we can do whatever we need to do. Um, a lot of us, we have the bundle custom tables and, and then the unlimited, uh, if we have App Engine. What's important is we're saying which part of these are go to which subscription, and we still have to map them. Even if you have unlimited tables, you may not have unlimited users for those tables. So it's important that we do map the right the right tables to the right subscription so we know which users are entitled to use them and which ones are not entitled to use them. We don't want to pay for people who aren't using them and we want to make sure we are we're paying for the people who are using them. I'm going to look at Lisa to make sure that she nods and go, yeah, I said that right. I <laughs> no, yeah. I was I was pondering the question in in Q and A, and there's a, a, there's an easy one in chat. So App Engine versus App Engine Starter. Yes. So the App Engine Starter are the bundled custom tables as I interpret this. Yes, app app engine starter. You'll see it, and it, we change the term is a little bit, or you might hear me use them interchangeably. But bundled custom tables are app engine starter. They're bundled yes. with a different SKU, and then app engine is when we're generally getting the unlimited ones. Again, you need to check your contract uh, over the years. Um, we've used slightly different terms. Um, yeah, but we're talking about what what do we sell today? What are our standard terms today? And then and the, the other question. question that got in through the Q&A panel uh, is, is it possible to identify whether users will fulfill our licenses are using the paid aspects of the license? In theory, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, so as far as knowing what they're being used for, um, ServiceNow charges for the right to use. 
Um, so having the role and being able to do it is, is what the subscription is consuming. Um, whether they're using it, whether they're actually doing anything, um, different licenses do different things. So you'd want to look for some key indicators. Um, if I were looking for my fulfillers, I'd probably look for um, users who have updated a, uh, an incident, a problem, some task in some amount of time in the last 90 days in the last year. If you haven't updated a task, you know, your name is not the last one it updated. I'd probably want to scrutinize whether you could do it. But a lot of fulfill it, fulfilling um, fulfillers can also just read all the tasks. So you may have somebody who's not updating, but they need to be able to read everything or they might be commenting on something taking some action on things and they may still need a fulfiller license. So uh, it gets pretty complicated pretty quickly on what are you doing? But I, I think it is reasonable to look at the key actions. Um, and if I know I updated a case, well then, yeah, I definitely need a fulfiller. And if I, I have it, maybe I'll take a second pass. Um, we'll look at users who haven't logged in. You know, if somebody hasn't logged in in a year, maybe they don't, I can take that subscription away. Um, but that gets a little bit more complicated. Um, we talk about a little bit more in that session from last year. So you may want to go take a look at that. But it, in subscription management, we are looking at who has the right to do something because that's what we're, we're paying for. Okay, so we talked about the, uh, why do we have the custom tables, right? Why do we have bundle tables? Why do we have app engine tables? Whether it's to configure, it's to build. But what is a custom table? What are we actually talking about here? So the custom tables, if we go back into our contracts, we will see that there's a definition of a custom table. We're gonna talk about this some more about what it means. But what I really wanna clarify is that every table you create is not necessarily a custom table. A custom table is a type of table we create. Um, any non-service now provided table is a candidate to be a custom table. It doesn't mean it is a custom table. We'll talk about the ones that aren't, but generally, if you create it, it can be. Um, there's a couple of cases where if it comes from a partner app, it might be a custom table as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But if I create a table, we then are going to look, is it exempt or not exempt? So tables you create are generally going to be custom unless they fall into one of these exemptions. So a couple of the exemptions that we have, um, there's if you extend certain tables, they're exempt and we're not going to charge you for them. They're not going to be considered custom. M to M tables are not considered custom. Remote tables, archive tables, rotate table, the shards of them, not considered custom. And database views um, aren't tables, but just for completeness, we don't, we don't consider those to be uh, custom tables as well. So is there a good way to identify those, like with a prefix or something? No. And we're going to talk about how you do do that. Um, it, some of us you know, the really simple way, it's U tables, right? We used to talk about U tables or X tables. You may see that. It's not good enough. Um, you're going to okay. count some things that shouldn't be and some things, you're going to count some custom, some tables with a U as custom, but they're not. And some that, some are custom that don't have a U. So let's talk about what those really are in detail. But um, the quick answer is you, you can't tell just by the name and U's and X's don't mean they're custom. Doesn't mean they're not custom. It doesn't mean they are custom. So let's not focus in on the names, even though it's really easy. We're going to be really tempted to do that. <laughs> let's talk about the details that we go through. And I'll show you where you look in your instance about how do I see how many custom tables I have, which we have to see so we can map. Um, in general, it, 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 hopefully as specific as possible, in general, um, any out-of-the-box table that comes from ServiceNow, whether it comes from the store or, or an upgrade, should not be custom. It should not be custom. Um, if you if you see those in there, and we'll we'll talk about uh, a couple of these cases uh, going forward. If it comes from ServiceNow because I installed something and it showed up, it should not be custom. Um, and and in store apps, if we talk about apps, if it is a ServiceNow store app, it's not custom. If it's a partner paid app, if you paid for this app through the store uh, for a partner app, it should not be cut have custom tables. And if it's an integration category from the integration category, you should not do that. Now for any of these, if I add a new table, it is user created, whether it has a U or doesn't have a U. Any of the store things are not gonna have a U. So the whole scope isn't free. And again, the name can be really hard to tell, but if you if I go into an integration app and I create a table, it's gonna be custom, most likely gonna be custom. Uh, we have a fitting question around this uh, for the partner apps from the store. So Julie asks, are custom tables that come from a free partner app on the store, they are considered custom? They are considered custom. As far as fine. Yeah, yes. they are. Yeah, so that's the cutout we have here, right? If you get a free app, it would be just, when you pay for a partner app, 
you're paying for the license. It's it's embedded with it for those for those tables. But if you have a free partner app, um, you're not paying for them. So you'd have to you'd have to map them to a bundled subscription, the App Engine Starter, or if you have App Engine, you're you're good as well. But the the free apps from a partner are just like you're you're creating them. It's great. It's awesome, right? You're getting a bunch of other stuff with them. Um, somebody designed it, saves you a lot of time, um, easier support. But the, there's no entitlement that comes for those tables, so you need to put that those tables against one of the existing entitlements that you have. Um, we'll get there's another question in there. We'll get to in just a second. Okay, so how do I tell the difference between what's custom and what's not custom if I created it? Well, every table you create should go into one of two tables that you you have access to. You can go see which is the custom table inventory and the exempt table inventory. The custom table inventory is UA custom table inventory. I love how creative we are sometimes. And then uh, the exempt inventory is UA exempted table inventory. Um, and the, the terms are in here. I don't know why it's not exempt table inventory, but it's exempted table inventory if you want to look. Um, so when I create a table, it's going to go into one of those two. If it comes from the store, it's it actually shouldn't be in either one. Um, if we don't consider it to be user created, which the, the store tables, the integration apps, we actually just consider not to be user created, they won't go into one of these. The other ones will. If I create a table, but every U table I create, it's going to go into one of these two. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the exemptions so you understand what's not a custom table. So what's not a custom table? There are certain exemptions, uh, certain table extensions that we exempt because extending them is just using the platform. We're not charging. We're not trying to charge you for using the platform. We're trying. We're we're making sure that when you're building new apps, uh, there there's some some fair exchange of value there. So things like seem to be CI, when you create a new CI, it creates a table. That's not a custom table. You, not you, as I don't care what the name of the table is. If you're extending CMDB CI, it's not a custom table. It is. And that goes down the whole hierarchy, right? If I whole extend yes. and extend that one and extend that one, all of the extended tables and all hierarchy levels will all be exempt. Correct. We, whatever it is, no matter the exemptions, the exempted tables are based off of the base tables we're exempting. Thank you. Um, import set rows, import sets. We create import sets. We're not charging you for import sets. We're not trying to charge you for import sets. Um, you know, the tables are there, it creates tables, but they all extend import set row. We're fine. Um, data lookups and, and uh, DL definition. Again, to use the pro, the, to use service now, you need to create these tables. We're not trying to charge you for those. They're user created, but they are not custom. There's a full list of these in the custom table guide, which we'll have in the references uh, before. Um, it's a, a schedule posted on servicenow.com, uh, servicenow.com slash schedules.html. You'll find the custom table guide. Um, the one that, that applies to you is the one when you sign your contract. Um, they don't change very often, um, but that, those are there. Um, and, we'll, and we'll get you the link to that. It has the full list of exemptions as well as these other things that we're going to be talking about. So those are extended tables that, again, not custom. There's some other ones that we do look at that, that are also not custom that come from kind of checking a box. So if you use the data archiving process at ServiceNow, when I, if I want to archive um, incidents that are over three years old, whatever the case is, I, I go to the archive tool, I check archive, I configure the archive rule, it's going to create a shadow table that starts with AR um, for archive. Um, those are not custom. Archive tables are not custom. We're not trying to have you pay for those tables again. Um, rotated table shards. So if you want to rotate a table, it creates shards of that table. Those are exempted as well. Uh, query builder results. Uh, this question came in. Um, they should not be there now. Um, when you use query builder, it creates new tables for every every query you run. Those actually extend something else. That's actually how we know how they're working. Um, but we're not trying to charge you for query builder results as well. Okay. So lots of tables that, that come through. We have the custom table guide that explains it. Um, and then there's a KB article um, that you can search for on support. Uh, this is the KB number. We actually went through and go, how do we determine what's what? Um, so the query builder, it explains, this is how we determine what's a query builder. Uh, this is what, this is how we determine what's an archive. Um, the rotated table shards, we actually go look and make sure it's a rotated table. We're not looking at the name. We're looking, is it registered and where it needs to go? So I, I recommend that you uh, take a look at the custom table guide. That's in legalese, closer to English. The, the KB explains how we technically are fingerprinting what's going on. So you can understand what should be there and shouldn't be there. 
a couple other exemptions we want to go through, M to M tables. Now, this one I do want to call out. It's in the KB article, but we are looking for tables that are registered in sys M to M, not just with the name M to M. We don't look for the string M to M. Um, a lot of us might do that. We just go create M to M, but we need to look for tables that are actually registered as M to M, whatever the name may be. Um, so if you go to sys M to M, that's how you should create a table if you're going to use an M to M. Just creating a table and putting two references in, that's not a service now M to M table, even though it logically is, even though the you might name it M to M, we want to make sure that we're using the system to M table so that we know what it is regardless of the name. So I remember there being a couple of questions uh, back and forth around M to M tables. Are there any restrictions on adding fields to these? There are, and it's detailed in the custom table guide. So the, the M to M tables, um, we, we treat like references, you know, we know we need to use them. And, and just because you're going to add an M to M that again, you're not, you're just configuring it's, it's fine. Sure. Um, there is a restriction. I believe it's three additional fields based on what's okay. created. So it's going to create a bunch of fields. Um, it's going to create the two references and uh, the sys created by updated by all, all of those. Um, and then you can add up to three more fields and still have it be exempt. Um, and cool. that was so that we could cover a start time, end time, and a state. Uh, relationships can oh, change yeah. over time. I've had, I've used those in tracking licenses, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, Way back when. So, yeah. So, so you know, we 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 are we want to make sure that it's easy. In a relationship, in an end to end table, there can be a start time, an end time, and a state. Uh, normal. So, there in the contract, you'll see that the, up to three fields are are fine. Um, if you're adding more than that, then you're really creating a new table, and then we want to we we want to make sure we're treating that as a table, not not just as a relationship. So again, those M to Ms, I'm going to say it again. Make sure you go to sys M to M to create it. Make sure it's got a register, it's got a record, a matching record in sys M to M that tells me the many to many table. That's the table that we do not that we exempt. Um, next is store table exemptions. So we we talked about this briefly, but the store table exemptions. Um, if it's a ServiceNow store app, free, paid, doesn't matter. If it came from ServiceNow, it came from ServiceNow. It, it, it's, it actually shouldn't be anywhere. It might be in the exempt table. It is not custom. Um, the UA custom table inventory is the one that you need to make sure you, uh, you protect and that it let, appears to be correct for you. The exempt table, it just allows us to track and gives us some information about what's going on so that we can, uh, we know where tables went. But the custom table inventory is the one that's really important. Paid partner apps, if you paid through the store, and to clarify, if you're paying the partner directly, that's not paying through the store. It needs to be um, purchased through the store um, so that we know that it was that it was paid. Um, and then those, those tables should be free. If you go in afterwards and add a table, if the partner comes in afterwards and adds tables on your behalf, those are also not, those are, those would be considered custom or would be looked at to be see if they're custom. But the tables that came with the app in the store are, are exempted. So and then integration the partner, apps, anything. If the partner extended their app and put that through the whole store release cycle thing, that'll still be included. But if they created the an, an, another table on your instance, then it's custom. Correct. Correct. Cool. Even if you don't know they did it, the partner did it on your <laughs> behalf, which is, which is what's custom. Custom. And then integration apps, um, if you get an integration app from the store, uh, paid, free, doesn't matter. Uh, those tables out of the box are going to be exempted. Um, they're not going to show up as custom. Again, if you go into an integration app and add new tables, those are going to be custom. Grandfather tables. So some of some of us will see, um, I just want to talk about these a little bit. Uh, for some of our, our older customers that, that came over, you might have grandfathered tables. Grandfather tables are standard custom tables. So very important to understand. They are custom tables. It's just a license we have for them. So if you have an, uh, a table, it might be exempt. It might be out of the box. If it is custom, it will show up in the custom table inventory. There's no separate inventory for grandfather tables. Shows up in the custom table inventory. Um, then you need to associate the grandfather license to them. It's just a license, like it was an ITSM license, like an app engine license. You're saying this table I want to be great, have been grandfathered. There's some special rules for grandfather tables. Generally, you can change the subscription to a grant to a table to a custom table anytime you want to. We're going to do that in just a second, but you can do it anytime you want to. Not for grandfather tables. There's special terms for these. 
um, they cannot be changed. Once they're assigned to a grandfather subscription, they cannot be changed. And even after the table is deleted, it will still retain that subscription. They cannot be reused. They cannot be harvested. Every other custom table, you can do that. If you drop it, you go use it for something else. Um, you, you, you drop it, you get it back. Do whatever you want to do. You can change it when you want. Grandfather, once they've been associated to a grandfather subscription, they cannot be changed. And even if removed, you don't get that license back. That, those are the, the special terms that come with the grandfather license. Um, but you can add new fields to them. You can have new access users that access them. You can still use them, use them whatever you need them to be, whatever you need them to do. They're not dead. Um, they're not frozen. They're still an active table that you can configure, control, add a, add a flow to whatever needs to happen. Um, but the subscription is what's going to is what's going to freeze in time. All right. So why do I why do I map tables? Well, we talked about what they are. We've just spent quite a bit of time talking about what custom tables are, but why why map them? Um, and the simple answer is for this that custom tables are come with different subscriptions, and you're we're matching. We're saying this is part of uh, this subscription. This is part of a different subscription. Um, the subscriptions come with different numbers. These are actually, I think these are made up. Some, some subscriptions come with none. Um, Integration Hub doesn't come with any tables with it inherently. Many of the SKUs come with uh, five custom tables or 25. It's going to say in your, in, your uh, in the product, in the description, when you're looking at it, you know, make sure you know what you're buying and what you're getting and how much you need. Uh, the tables, that come with it uh, go, well, we're gonna talk about this a little bit more, but they're different amounts. And so we wanna have a table to say, well, this table is one of my HR tables. I wanna treat it like it's HR. So let's, let's get to that. So if we get to essentially what we're doing for these tables when I map them is I'm treating it like it's an out of the box table for that app. So if I have an entitlement for predictive intelligence with HR, but not for ITSM, then we're saying, well, if it's mapped to HR, I, this entitlement, the predictive intelligence entitlement should also be valid for this table. We're going to treat that table just like it was out of the box, which means the users that can access the out of the box tables for that app can also access this custom table. They're entitled to do that. The, if there's features that are only entitled for a certain app, they're entitled for that app. So you are telling us very clearly, I want you to treat my custom table like it's out of the box for this application. And it's the other way around also, right? If a user has access to that table, they need a license for that product. Absolutely. That is the case too. So if I create a custom table and I associate it to ITSM and there's fulfiller access for that, then whether or not they have ITIL, whether or not they have access to incident problem or change, they need to have an ITSM subscription. So we're going to yeah. talk about that a little bit more, but how do we figure that out? But it's very important that we have the right users mapped to the, the, the tables, the people who use the table, the features I'm using on that table, best aligned to which subscription. Um, and then it gives us some accurate reporting. Again, each of the subscriptions, um, I'll, I'll jump back uh, a slide, have how many tables were included with that subscription and how many tables we're using. Well, the way we know what you're using is by what you map. All right, now let's get to how do I map them? What comes through and how do I map my tables? So there's two key things that we need to remember here. Um, the best way to map tables is with apps. The best way to create tables is with apps. Even in the global scope, we can create a, a global app to hold my customizations. Any table that is in an app, whether it is a global app or whether it is a scoped app, we map the subscription at the app level. So if I have a custom app to handle my um, catering orders for my cafeteria, and I'm using an App Engine license for that, well, then I'm gonna map all that to App Engine. If I have um, a minor incident app, because I wanna have minor incidents, um, I'm gonna map that to, uh, to ITSM, uh, most likely to ITSM. Apps, we map to tables in an app at the app level. That's really the preferred way. It's way easier to do it. So we certainly recommend that. There is a note, if you have a bunch of global tables, you can create a global app to manage those, which makes life much easier. And the subscription management part is very easy as well. If you have a global table in a in the global app, in the global app, not a global app, I know that's confusing, but if I have an old global table, um, then that we're actually gonna map at the table level because there's no better way of doing it. Um, but if I have hundreds of tables, it can, you know, I gotta map hundreds of things. 
uh, to come through. So and with you can that, add you can add artifacts to an app later on. So if you have tables already created in global scope, you can pull them in when you create a global app. Correct. We can go in, and if, if I already have uh, if I have thirty tables that are in the global global scope, we can create a new app put them all in there and then map them as a subscription. You don't have to do that. So again, we can do them in a table by time, but there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, and maybe we should run a session if we haven't run that on, on moving to global apps. Um, we have the link in here that talks about how do you do those things. It's really nice. It gives us a lot of advantages to, uh, to do that. And subscription management is just one of those advantages. All right, and with that, we're actually gonna go do a little bit of mapping. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing and then start sharing real quick. We're having some some great questions. And one of the questions I think you already answered, but I just wanted to surface it again. What happens if you don't map them? So if you don't map them, it's a good question. Um, we're gonna ask you to map them. <laughs> uh, to, to come through right now, we're gonna ask you to map them. Um, what can happen uh, generally is that we'll just start treating them as app engine licenses. Uh, or app engine. So if you have an unrestricted user app engine license, then maybe you don't need to map them because you're paying for it all anyway. Um, other than that, you want to, it's in your benefit to do it really. Because if we don't know, we have to assume a custom table is a new app, then that needs app engine and we need licenses for that. But what you're able to do is say, this is an app engine. I'm not building a new app. I'm just adding a new table for ITSM with my 25 tables. Okay, great. We are already paying for those users. You're already paying for this functionality. Just lets us know. Um, but ostensibly, we're going to come back at, and ask you to map it so that we know we don't we don't want to give you a bill that's too big. You know, we don't want to say there's a compliance issue if there's not a compliance issue. Um, but the way that we do that is by you helping, telling us what are we what are we want to trying to do. All right, so let's get into um, into mapping tables. So we're going to do this really quickly. This it is pretty easy. I'm in subscription management. Um, I went to my subscription management um, overview. I'm going to go to the custom custom application inventory. And my custom application inventory is giving me a few different pieces of information. So how many exempt tables do I have? How many global tables without applications do I have? So these are ones I have to go map individually. Um, how many grandfathered tables, which could be zero for a lot of us, but it might be there. And then, and then all of my custom tables. So these are all of my custom tables. And we'll see the subscription that I have is nothing. I have not mapped these. I need to map them. So if I want to come in, um, I can do it here. Okay, we can't list edit here because I'm in a report, but I'm going to come in. Uh, this is these are all in an app, and then these are in the the global app. You know, what we talked about these are all going to be mapped together. These are going to be mapped one at a time. And just and to make this a little... table. <laughs> um, and you get a table. So I just went in here so, to get a little bit better better view. Just clicked on the. I clicked on the ones that were global and then it removed it. So this is the UA custom table inventory. So I have all of my custom tables in here, um, both uh, in a scope or in an application, not an application. These happen to be a scoped application, but if it was a global application, it would work the same way. Um, we are not able to list edit here, but I'm going to go into you get a table. <laughs> and you get a table, I have subscription. So I'm going to map this what table. I don't know if we're going to see the pop-up. Do you see my pop-up? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, I'm going to map these to my CSM subscription. This has a list of all my subscriptions we saw on the subscription overview, and we're going to update that. And when I come back here, I see this is now part of CSM. Um, and you get a table, probably part of CSM as well. But if I go into this, um, I can map this to a different subscription. Again, it's in global. We'll do whatever we need to do. Um, so we'll do that. And now we have it mapped there. I can come into CSM. Oh, you know what? I don't want this to be CSM. I want this to be ITBM. If I have ITBM, yeah, I do. So my ITBM, again, map it, not a problem. And now we're going to go into uh, code change. Well, you'll see, I don't have a, I can't edit the subscription here. Um, and I'm going to point this out because I do this all the time and it still confuses me. I go, it's broken. It's broken. Why can't I edit the subscription? Uh, read the blue text. It is amazing how blind we can become to blue, but subscriptions are now managed at the application level. We probably should remove now because this has been this way since Quebec. So I'm going to go to manage subscription. It's still broken, right? I can't edit the <laughs> subscription. 
Well, again, it's actually what it says up here. This is part of the application record. I do need to be in that scope. Um, so I'm going to switch to this application and now I can edit subscription. Um, there is a view here in case you don't see it, which is the subscription view. That's where you edit the subscription. I don't think in the default view it's there. I'm just going to switch to see real quick. Uh, while that loads, Actually, oh, it's there. <laughs> it, it's here as well. Um, I'm going to go back to the subscription yeah. view. Hey, one question in, in the Q&A panel. Uh, so uh, where, what's the best way or where would you map these? Is this in uh, prod only? Um, yeah, you're going to do it in prod because the custom table inventory is created when you install the, the tables. Um, I, I believe you actually can map, you could map these before. Um, uh, for the for the table, uh, but the subscriptions may vary. The sys IDs actually probably do vary. Um, so you want to do it in prod. Um, and even if you mapped them in a sub prod, you probably have to redo it in prod uh, because the sys IDs, the references might be different. I thought they actually only populated to prod. The uh, we fixed that in Quebec. So oh, that's in Quebec, cool. you'll, you'll, you'll see them. You'll see the subscriptions there. You'll see them. But again, the, the, it's actually being down. The instance pulls them every night. Your instance prod ah. and sub prod goes to our license server every night and pulls the licenses that you have. Um, that, that means sys IDs are different. The sys yeah. IDs are probably going to be different. Um, what if so you some prod. What if you clone from prod to your sub prods? It'll and be it's the just then it would be the same sys ID, right? And when it refreshes from the server, it would just know it's the right one. Um, it probably won't work that way. <laughs> it probably it probably see the different subscriptions and change them. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I I haven't looked on a clone. Um, you definitely want to make sure it's right in production. And the custom tables are definitely different because that is actually calculated on your instance. So if I install the same apps and I do the same things, um, apply the same update sets, I will have it will look the same in the custom mm -hmm. table inventory, but it will be different. Yeah, like, Julie different. Julie has confirmed that in Q and A and said it does actually persist throughout clones. So the the difference is IDs. Okay. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, okay, so I, I'm going to set this to to CSM, and we'll update that. And now we're going to go back. I'm going to go back in history to my custom. Table inventory. And now my custom able to, table inventory, we map the um, application reconciliation app to CSM. Again, I can come in right now and go, oh, I don't want that to be CSM. I want that to be ITSM. And at some point I'll remember that it doesn't, it's not say ITSM. And now they're all mapped to ITSM. So again, we can change them whatever we need to change them, whatever makes sense for you. Your users change, change them. Um, but now I have them all mapped. This is good. If I come back to my application inventory, things should look pretty good here. Um, ITSM, ITBM, I can see how many tables are coming through. If I go look at my subscription overview, we're also going to see that the tables are used here. So I have one for ITBM and ITSM is using eight out of 25. So we're all good. We'll, we'll see all those. Go back to the inventory. Um, I'm going to bring this up real quick. My exempt tables, I'm just going to go look at this. There's no action for you to take on an exempt table. You'll notice there's no subscription on your exempt table because they don't need a subscription. This is just so we don't get we don't have tables that get lost. Um, and here, what we're seeing is that uh, you get a table, you get a table, but not this one or this one. Um, these are exempting, uh, these are extending exempted tables. So they, they're just not custom, not custom. Uh, import set row, another one in here. It's, it's exempt, right? So we didn't lose it, but it's there. Um, okay, let me go back here. We're going to go back to my custom inventory. I'm gonna go back here. I but I got to see if I have if I have grandfathered subscriptions on here. I don't remember if I forget, if I put them on or not. Um, I don't. But the the grandfather subscription is one that that you might have on here. And again, it, once you map it to a grandfather subscription, you can't undo it. Um, and I'm gonna point out in here in the custom table inventory, the table name. You, I think the table name you might see is blank at some point in time because there's actually two table names on here. And I'm gonna personalize this and add my second one. <laughs> Actually, the table name is the table name, so we're fine there. There's also a field called table reference. The table name is the name. It will always be there. 
even if you drop the table, that was the table that was consuming that subscription. The table reference is a reference to the table in SysDB object. If I delete the table, ah, this will be empty. This will be so empty. My, you should never have empty references unless there's a grandfather table. If it's a grandfather subscription, then the table reference can be empty because it's a placeholder and you'll see the original name that's in there. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. We've talked about all the exemptions. For the custom table inventory, if you see something mapped to ITSM or not mapped to anything, and it doesn't have a table reference, put in a case, we'll fix it. There, there were some issues in some of the instances that have some kind of junk that's left over, especially some of the older instances. Um, if you see something that's wrong, if you see something, say something, put a case in, we'll fix it. Um, you, you may not have the ability to do this, but, but we can. Um, so go ahead and do that. Put the case in. If I see import set rows in here, if I see query results, we had a question about that early, put a case in, we'll fix it. Um, happy. I'm not happy to do it, but I will we'll do it. <laughs> um, I'd like I'll be happier when, it, when it's always correct. Um, you can see here, these are these are, are all custom, my exempt one to exempt, but take a look at it. It's really important that you do that because if, it, if I saw an import set row here or a query result table, we're going to think there's an unmapped table and that you're out of compliance and that's not the case. So it's really important that we all have the right custom tables, that what we see is what we expect is what we get. Uh, okay. So I think we talked about how do you map them at the app level? App is great. We can do it at the table level, um, but make sure that your when you go look at one of these records, we see this is at the globe. This is not in an app. If it was in an app, that we're going to map it at the app level. And if I'm at the app level, that I'm in the right scope. Common things that we stumble on, so we want to make sure that we check those things and get it right. We have a new question, um, and and Sharon asks if there are available tables, say for ITSM, is there any validation that the custom table is used by ITSM? So it, that, that doesn't it, matter, right? You can associate any custom table to any subscription as long as their cap, uh, capacity. So, <laughs> so a couple things with that. One, you can go over capacity. Uh, oh. Just like we'll let you go over users, mm -hmm. um, we'll true up. You could go over capacity, we'll true up. We're not going to stop you from doing it because you got to do your job. Right. Um, you can go over capacity and then we'll true up. We'll, we'll figure out a, a good resolution for these things. Um, but be aware, right? We want you to be aware. We don't want you to be surprised. The point we're showing this is that you know you're going over capacity. When you've mapped your tables, you're like, wow, I'm way over. Let's go figure out what we're going to do to get in compliance, right? Do I have the right things mapped or, or not? Um, but we are not going to stop you from over allocating, right? First of all. Second, if I map a table to ITSM, now it is ITSM. Um, and when we can't tell what is and what isn't, right? What data is going in there? We're not, we're not examining the table and going, I don't think this that you're doing this right. <laughs> we trust you. If you tell us it's ITSM, it's ITSM. Now let's we're gonna with that, we're gonna go to the next section and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. So I am going to stop sharing again. Um, anything else that we want to see a demo on in here? Again, it's all pretty simple. I do want to show it. Um, because the big, biggest question I get is the subscription's not writable. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's in an app or I'm in the, it's in, or I'm on the app and I'm on the wrong scope. Um, but when we do the right things, it, it works right and it's fine. Um, the one note is if I grand, if I grandfather this, the allotment type will be see grandfathered and then it will not be changeable, right? Once it's grandfathered, it's locked. If there is any issues with that, you need to put a case in, um, so that we can address it, but contractually you're not allowed to reassign them. So it's, if it's wrong, it was just done wrong that whatever the case may be. And actually we're in here. I'm going to show this as well um, since I, I, I thought of something I want to demo. So I'm going to come into my tables. Again, none of these are grandfathered, but if I come into uh, and you get a table, I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to go back to global. And I hate to disappoint everybody, but you get a table, but not you. So we're going to delete this table. And when I delete this table, this is not a grandfather table. We clean up the custom table inventory. It's gone. It's gone. Right. So we, if you ever, if we want to look at it, the name uh, is, is a string. The reference is a reference to the table. You should never have anything without a reference unless it's grandfathered. This, this instance doesn't have any grandfather licenses. I have an associated grandfather license. I should never have a table that doesn't have a reference. Okay. We want the custom table to be clean. 
If you have a question, put in a case, we will get you the answer. We'll clarify what it is. Uh, my ask is that you go look at the, the custom table guide and go read that KB. Make sure you're comfortable with, this doesn't look right to me. Um, take a look at it. And then if it doesn't look right to you, put a case in, we will, we will resolve it. Um, most of these are fine, but there, there still is a little bit of noise out there. All right, and we're gonna stop sharing and we're gonna go back to these, the presentation. Done with our demo. Let's talk about how do I choose between subscriptions? One of the most important things, right? We, we talked about that. Um, so goals for mapping, what are we trying to do? What do we, we understand why we need to map them. We understand how to map them, but what are we trying to do? So we wanna make sure that users that access that table have the entitlement to access it. We all wanna be in compliance. We wanna minimize the number of users of extra entitlements for users that don't, that, that's the only thing they have. So we talked about ITSM. If I have a table where none of my users have ITIL, there's, they have no other role, but I map a table to ITSM and now these users are fulfillers on ITSM, I now have to buy them ITSM licenses because that table you've told us, you have told us, treat this like it's out of the box. So if I have fulfillment access to this custom table, I have to pay for it. We don't, you know, maybe that's the right thing. Maybe it's not. Um, but we don't want to pay for users when that's the only thing that they're they're using. We don't want to pay for a bunch of extra stuff that they're not going to use that comes out of the box. And the same thing, we want to minimize the people um, who don't have access, who, who have entitlement but not access. So if I have a thousand ITSM fulfillers and only five people need to access this table, maybe I don't want to bundle that to ITSM. Maybe I want to buy App Engine for five people, right? Maybe that's it. What makes more sense? I don't want to pay for stuff. I don't want to pay for people who aren't using the out of the box stuff. And I don't want to pay for custom tables for people who would never use it. Right. It's a balancing act. So what do we need to consider? We need to consider which users are accessing it. Um, so if we're talking about ITSM, CSM, App Engine that are paying by fulfillers, who accesses it matters. And following on to that, the access type, how are they accessing it? Are they just requesters? Doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter for the fulfiller-based stuff. Um, but which users and how they're accessing it really matters for ITSM, CSM, App Engine, and ITBM. If I have ITOM and it's or, or SecOps, something that is capacity-based, that's not based per user, um, we only have a limited number of tables, but how they use it doesn't matter. But you need to be aware of that to come through. The next is the existing entitlement. Do those users already have ITSM? Do those users already have CSM? Because this, this, I mean, if I'm doing configuration, and I'm, I'm creating minor incident. Well, yeah, they already have ITSM. All the users, you know, 90% of my users need to use it. That's a great fit. But if they don't have the entitlement, maybe I need to look at buying a new entitlement because it's actually going to be cheaper um, than buying more of something I already have. And then capacity, do I have more tables? So something like ITOM generally comes with five tables. Well, that's five. Um, there's no per user restrictions, but it's only five tables. So I want to make sure it's the right ones. And again, when we talk about ITOM, extending CI doesn't count. New, new, new class types doesn't count, it don't count, MTMs don't count. So the numbers are there for a reason because generally it's enough to, to configure what needs to go on once we count the exemptions. But these are things that we need to think about. Um, again, how much capacity we have, we were on the subscription overview. We see for each subscription, how many tables are included and how many we're using. Again, the using, we can't figure it out. You're telling us by mapping. Um, so the generally what I recommend is go map them and then see where you go map them based on what you think it's supposed to be there. Again, if it's in the app level, it's going to be pretty easy for you. Um, if we have a hundred things in global, it, it, you got to think, you got to do a lot more thinking than I like to do. See how many are there and then we'll figure out where to go, but just go through the exercise once. Um, go through it once, see where you're at, and then we'll figure out how to adjust from there. So let's go through a couple of examples that I want to talk through. So just as the basis for this customer that we're, we're talking about, um, my customer entitlements. I have 500 ITSM Pro fulfillers, comes with 50 tables. I have 250 App Engine fulfillers, unlimited tables. I love this one. Unlimited. We like to build. ITOM unlimited Health. is always good. Unlimited is, is always good, right? Um, then I have uh, 25,000 subscription units for ITOM Health, has five tables. I have um, Automation Engine with 100,000 transactions or a million transactions, whatever it comes with now. No tables. So that's to throw you off, just so you know, don't tell your friends. Um, <laughs> and my total users on the instance are 9,500. Okay, so this is the basis that we're gonna make the decision. This is the customer we're looking at. 
So from here, we're going to create a table called minor incident. I'm creating it in global because it's ITSM and a lot of stuff's in global. Probably should still do a scope, but I didn't. Um, so I have minor, minor uh, incident extends task. Task is definitely not excluded. If I extend task, it's going to be a custom table. Just it's going to be a custom table. Um, and it's accessible. I reused a role. Um, it's accessible by incident right. There are 500 because of the incident right. There's 500 fulfillers on this table. Um, I mean, they have fulfiller access. They're writing to every record. So I have 500 table fulfillers. There's no requesters. Everybody who's coming to this is a fulfiller. How many of those 500 have ITSM? All 500. How many don't have uh, ITSM? None of them. They they all have they all have it. How many of them have App Engine licenses? 50. And how many don't have App Engine licenses? 450. Right. Simple math in here. When I look at this, it's pretty clear to me. I'm going ITSM. Everybody who needs it has it. Everybody who has it needs it. I'm not paying for anything extra. Great, great. Uh, going back to one of the questions that came before, are they actually all fulfilling? I don't know, but they all have the right to fulfill. Um, they all have access. They all have the right to fulfill. They all need. They all have the entitlement to fulfill. We're a good matchup. The the right the right access is the the clue right here because requesters usually don't have global right permissions. They can create. And maybe they can comment, but they cannot write on a table. Right. This and, and I'm right is the thing. There's a little bit more to it about whether the right is in there. Now, the right in this case actually does mean right to all. Yes. Um, that's what that means fields. on incident. And that's what we did here. It's a mm -hmm. custom table. So there could be some nuance to it. Um, but ostensibly, you see right. You can write to all the records, you're a fulfiller. Um, ITSM's it. And again, I'm not I don't have any extra. This is this is a perfect, perfect configuration table. Right. And in this case, I'm considering minor incidents to be a configuration. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, next, next use case. Uh, I created an incident to CI M to M table. Out of the box, we only have one CI, I believe. Um, and I created an M to M because I actually have multiple CIs in my incident. Blah, 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 blah. Quick answer here. It's an M to M. It's exempt. We don't have to map anything. Remember, the exempts don't even have subscriptions. So, if I have this M to M and it shows up on my custom table, what do I do? Lisa said, put in a case. We put in a case. <laughs> I can read the list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, okay. So again, we're not mapping it for things that are exempt. The custom tables should be custom tables. If you have any questions, put a case in. Read the, read the custom table guide. Read the KB. Put a case in if, if you need to. Um, next, I have uh, cafe orders. Um, for Acme Cafe Orders, this company name is Acme. We're going to go with that. Even if it was a free partner app, let's say that Acme was, was a partner. They put something in the store for a free app for your cafe orders. doesn't matter, right? Again, it's not assuming it's not paid. Um, the table is cafe order. It extends task, so it's not going to be exempt. Um, it's accessible by the cafe manager role, and the users for this have no other roles on the instance. This is All they can do is put cafe orders in. Uh, or the manager. So on this table, it's, it's not a huge app. There's 25 people who have fulfillment access, 5,000 people who have requester access. So not all 9,500 users of mine, but 5,000, a good chunk. Um, all of those fulfillers or none of those fulfillers have ITSM licenses. None of them have ITSM licenses today. Five of them have App Engine licenses today and 20 don't. For this case, I'm going to pick App Engine because I would rather buy 20 App Engine licenses than, buy, than 25 ITSM licenses, right? There are only 25 fulfillers, which is fine, um, but I'm going to buy 20 App Engine licenses rather than, uh, than 20, 20 App Engine rather than 25 I, uh, ITSM. Yep, good. All right. Um, and also with App Engine, App Engine's not app at a time. So there's, those 25 users can actually use any app engine table that they need to from then out, right? So I can do more and more and more, and I won't have any incremental cost. Um, if I put them in ITSM, I'm going to be bound by those ITSM tables. Well, as long as they have uh, the permission via roles to access those. Yeah, secure entitlement-wise. Thank yes. you. They have the entitlement <laughs> to that. You don't have to pay any more for it. But yes. it suppose I build more apps and, and, they, and they need to be fulfillers. Uh, there's not going to be an additional charge. But yeah. of course, security trumps all. Okay, uh, so that one. This one's closer, right? Maybe I want to buy the 25 licenses. That's not that big of a deal. But imagine if this was um, 250 licenses and only five had access, right? Do I want to buy 250 um, ITSM licenses for people who wouldn't use ITSM otherwise? 
or do I want to buy a, a couple more App Engine licenses? Uh, now I have DSN, uh, DNS request. I have a new table. Um, Acme DNS request. There's 1,500 fulfillers. That's a lot of fulfillers. Um, no requesters. They're all fulfillers. Uh, it extends task again, right? I have some change to DNS that I want to have. It extends task. It's not going to be exempt. Um, there's a user role that comes through. Um, none of them have ITSM. It's a little weird, but let's go with none of them have ITSM. 25 of them already have App Engine. What do I want to buy? Well, what do I want to do? Doesn't sound gonna appealing. <laughs> I'm going to map it to ITOM, right? We get 25, <laughs> we get five tables with ITOM. I'm going to map it to ITOM. Um, it, it's clearly, I mean, DNS request makes sense that it's supporting ITOM. Um, I don't want to buy ITSM licenses for people who aren't going to use it. I don't want to buy App Engine licenses who otherwise don't need it. This is why we have those tables, right? It's a limited number of tables. So I want to be judicious. I wouldn't have used ITOM for those other ones to save a license or two licenses, but 1500 licenses, this is what we're doing. This is what we're trying to do. All right. Um, with that, um, I, mm -hmm. yeah, that's I me. We'll just, <laughs> back to Lisa. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Um, so while we look at this, I'll start my feedback poll. I'd love to have your feedback. How you liked it today with Adam? I thought it was, was super interesting. It's especially interesting to those who have already seen the last session. I've linked that in chat. So if you haven't yet, make sure to, to watch that. I'll also put it in the details of um, the blog post. And as you see this, this is the Academy, the Platform Academy. So I am happy you're here. We do this every other week. Um, would love to have you back again. And uh, we'll have some more topics this year. In two weeks, we'll speak about some ETF news that aren't public yet. So make sure to join us in two weeks. Um, and then we'll have one last session on December 8th. And that's all the outlook I have for this year. We'll uh, pick it up again on January 5th. I don't think there are any more questions. Um, I thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you, Adam, for, for uh, teaching us all about mapping custom tables and uh, where to go and what to do if the field is read only. Uh, because people will get confused when they see that. Um, so if do you have anything else to add? No, uh, I will I will say that if you have any other questions, um, the community is a great place to ask them. Yes. Um, on how do we do things? What's the best way to do things? But uh, thank you for some great questions that came through. Um, Absolutely. That was good. Uh, and, and hopefully this will help you explain what do you what do you need to do and help you do that help you take care of that so we can get really clear, crisp, correct information in subscription management. Awesome. Well, thank you again uh, for being with us today and and uh, showing us this all of this info, uh, Adam. And I will see you all in two weeks, I hope. Bye. <laughs> Bye.